I think this book really shows the perils of fame. This mm -hmm. is, you have some great stories here. I think the definitive story is when you were the one where you're whizzing in the uh, beer can and you and you find the two girls that were hiding in your trailer. Apparently, they'd been stowed away in there for some 36 hours or something, just to, for the opportunity. And of course, there's no bathroom in this trailer in 1973 or whatever it was. And I'm <laughs> decided, so I I decided to take a whiz in this beer can or a beer bottle, as it were, and. Uh, they were, I hear this rumbling, thinking it's like rats or something, and I'm, I start to, I startles the hell out of me. You know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm naked. So um, here I am holding um, my willy, and I felt, uh, you know, I felt, needless to say, uh, violated. I felt exposed. I felt stupid. But at the same time, it, it was kind of funny. I mean, I freaked. But then afterwards, about 10 minutes afterwards, I sat there with friends of mine who were going, I can't believe that you just experienced that. You know, these guys that were on the road with me, and I thought, you know, I should try and find those girls and bring them back. And, you know, anybody would th wait 36 hours in a trailer underneath, you know, a vanity I is certainly deserving of a hello. And um, <laughs> it was just pretty shocking. I now, when you were 24, this, uh, this all came to an end when you were 24, and you went through this long period um, I retired. You retired. At now the end re of the tour. Retired at the age of 24. Mm. Now, that's got to be a, uh, an incredible... Stupid. Uh, <laughs> Stupid is what it was. Um, I had to it, because they had perpetuated this imagery, and I felt unworthy of all this adulation and all this, you know, statues made of me and everything. Like, I was this superhuman, and I wasn't. Drugs and alcohol are responsible for the death of some of my closest friends, and nearly took me as well. What kind of drugs were it was at that time? Cocaine. How much? A lot. How much is a lot? More than I can ever remember. Um, as much as I wanted, I could, had, I could afford it, and, you know, I would go out on binges, you know. You know, I, we went through madness uh, in, the, in the mid to late 70s. Uh, those were the years that were, for me, um, years of self-abuse and self-destruction. And what prompted you to pull out of it? I guess you'd have to say a sense of uh, desperation, and I couldn't stand the way I felt about myself anymore. This is when you were feeling like a, fa a failure. You used to write in the book. Just mm. I, I was a failure. I had failed as a human being. I failed as a son in a way. I fel failed as, as a person. I, I was killing myself. Uh, you know, when you're doing cocaine and drinking and taking pills to, you know, numb yourself, you're not exactly, I was unhappy, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's not a lot of fun. It might be, it might be crazed and you might be laughing, but you're really dying inside and that, that was what was happening to me. For all those people out there who are doing it, there's a lot better way and I can only tell you, for me it was stopping um, the madness and the abuse and getting sober and um, going through analysis and finding out and trying to fix me. Come on, Get Happy might sound like a silly little trite title because it was the theme of the Partridge family, but it was really the, the story is about me in my pursuit of it. And finally, you know, after five years of intense three times a week, an hour and a half sessions uh, of analysis, uh, finding the light again and realizing that I've been given such a great gift and that people all over the world respected me and admired me and and revered me and I never felt worthy of it and uh, I guess in a sense I feel very fortunate and very lucky to be here and be cl have this clarity and have a, a sense of real peace about my life and uh, about my career and the fact that I feel really lucky that I was able to touch so many people's lives.